So this is the ultimate backend developer roadmap. Everything you need to learn to become a backend engineer in 2026. Before we dive in, I want to let you know that if you ever feel overwhelmed or stuck, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions to help you with anything. Backend topics, custom roadmaps based on your current skill level or your goals, whatever you need. The link is in the description. Alright, let's get into it. First of all, what exactly is backend development? Think of it like this. Front end is what you see. The buttons, forums, UI. Back end is what happens behind the scenes. It's where your data is processed, saved, secured and managed. Every time you log in, send a message, make a payment or store something in the cloud, the backend is doing the heavy lifting. And in today's world, it's more critical than ever. So if you want to build real products or work in real teams, you need backend skills. Let's start with the foundations. This is where everything begins. The most common mistake I see is people skipping the basics. Please don't. If your fundamentals are weak, you'll struggle a lot to build or debug anything real later. The first step is starting with JavaScript, the absolute basics of JavaScript, understanding variables, let, cons, and yes, even var, just to know what not to use. Master arrays and objects, loops, how functions work, and then go deeper. Closures, hoisting, the event loop. This is the stuff most tutorials skip, but interviewers don't. Don't just read. Code everything, build tiny projects, break things, that's how you get good. You'll also need to learn promise chains, async await, the then versus try catch, callback hell and refactoring, the event loop, call stack, the this keyword, how to use bind, apply, call, context loss. All of these are important. And JavaScript is the language we're going to be using in all technologies later. If you want to improve faster than anybody else, trust me. When I truly took time to understand and master JavaScript, that's when my career started to kick off and started finding jobs. Once you've got the hang of JavaScript, the next big step is TypeScript. Think of it as JavaScript with superpowers. It helps you catch errors early, work better in teams, and write code that's easier to scale. You'll start with the basic type annotations, like telling the compiler that a variable is a string or a number, and then move on to more advanced stuff, like interfaces, enums, and generics. If you want to work with frameworks like Nest.js or get hired by serious companies, TypeScript isn't optional anymore. It's a must. So take the time to learn everything about interfaces versus types, generics, type narrowing and guards, enums, literal types, utility types, OP with TypeScript, it's very important, especially in Nest, like classes, access modifiers, etc. Working with external types and TS configuration and build process. Please guys don't skip TypeScript. I know it was optional in the past, but now it's required. Almost all of the companies are using it and you'll find it in most job requirements. All right, now that you're writing real code, you need to manage it like a professional. That means learning Git, not just to push and pull, but to work in branches, create pull requests, handle merge conflicts, and understand how teams collaborate on code bases. Use GitHub Actions to set up automatic testing or deployments. It'll seem like magic at first, but it's the foundation of every modern workflow. Now we're getting into the heart of backend development. Development. No JS. It lets you run JavaScript on the server and it's what powers Express, Nest and most of the tools will use. Understand how Node is single threaded, how the event loop works and what makes it so fast for handling multiple requests. Then dive into its core modules like FS for working with files, HTTP for building servers and events for building reactive systems. You'll also need to know how to build CLI tools using process .irgv and how to debug your apps like a pro. Now package management. Managing dependencies is a big part of backend development. With Node, you'll use tools like npm, yarn, and pmpm to install packages, manage versions, and keep your code base clean. And if you want, try publishing your own package, even if it's just a utility. It's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about knowing how to reuse tools effectively. You'll also need to learn about environment configuration. Backend apps don't run the same in dev, staging, and production. 
and they shouldn't. Learn how to manage environment variables using the .env files and tools like .env. Never hard code secrets, it's very dangerous. Use config libraries and keep things flexible. This might seem like a boring part of development, but it's critical for building secure, scalable apps. Now error handling. Your app will break, and that's fine. What matters is how you handle it. Master proper error handling with try and catch, and learn how to deal with unhandled promised rejections. Also build graceful shutdowns, so when your app crashes or gets a shutdown signal, it cleans up and exits safely. This is what separates juniors from elites. Once you've got Node down, the next step is Express, the most popular backend framework in the Node ecosystem. It's minimal fast and gives you full control, which makes it great for learning the fundamentals and how servers and APIs work. You'll build routes, learn how to handle different types of requests, pass in parameters and add middleware to handle stuff like authentication or validation. Make sure to learn how to structure your app properly, not everything in one file, and how to handle errors cleanly. You'll also need to secure your app using headers, scores, rate limiting and tools like Helmet. It's the stuff that makes your app not get hacked. As your app grows, structure matters a lot. Learn how to break your app into controllers, services and models. This is the foundation of clean architecture. You'll also want to get used to using tools like Postman or Thunder Client to test your APIs. It's part of your daily workflow as a backend dev. And please, don't hardcode stuff everywhere. Learn how to manage dependencies properly and keep your code maintainable. Real World Express. This is where it gets real. You'll start working on more complex apps. And that means modularizing routes, adding authentication with GWTs or sessions, and writing your own custom error classes. This is the point where you're no longer just following tutorials. You're actually building usable systems. If you can build a solid Express app with clean routing, authentication, validation, and error handling, you're in a pretty solid spot already. All right. Now let's talk about databases. This is where your data lives. MongoDB is super beginner friendly and with Mongoose you can define schemas, enforce rules and build clean models. You'll want to get really comfortable with CRUD operations, schema validation using middleware like .pre and POST and populating relationships. Also spend time learning aggregation. That's how you do more complex data transformations without writing crazy logic in your app. Now on the SQL side, I recommend PostgreSQL and Prisma makes it way easier to work with. You'll define your schema in a you'll define your schema in the Prisma file, run migrations and use their client to write clean type safe queries. Understand relationships, one to many, many to one, and make sure you know how to handle transactions and draw SQL when needed. This combo, Postgres plus Prisma, is great for production apps and interviews. Let's be real, if your app doesn't handle security properly, it's dead in the water. Start with authentication, hashing passwords with bcrypt or argon2, understanding the difference between GWT and session-based auth, and how to set secure cookies. Then go deeper, OAuth2, social login flows like Google or GitHub, these are must-haves for real-world apps. Beyond auth, there is general security hygiene every backend dev needs to follow. Learn the OWASP top 10, the most common types of vulnerabilities like SQL injection, XSS, CSR, Use Helmet, validate input, sanitize data, rate limit endpoints, make sure you use HTTPS in production, and keep your secrets out of the repo. It's not hard to be secure, but you've got to be intentional. You can write perfect code, but if your API sucks to use, it's still a bad product. Learn RESTful API conventions, how to name your endpoints, which status codes to use, how to handle pagination, filtering. If you're serious about working with teams, version your APIs and document them clearly. GraphQL is a powerful alternative to REST that gives the client more control. You define your schema, write resolvers for each type and expose queries and mutations. It's a bit more complex at first, but shines in projects with a lot of front-end back-end coordination. Not mandatory for every backend dev, but definitely a nice tool to have under your belt. Now, the Nest.js framework. 
Once you're confident with Express, it's time to level up to Nest.js. Nest gives you a proper structure and brings TypeScript into full force with decorators, dependency injection, and modular design. It feels like Angular, but for backend and it's built for scale. If you want to build production-grade apps or work at companies that care about code quality, Nest is where you go next. Let's break down the core of Nest.js. Start by understanding modules. They organize your code into isolated units. Then you've got controllers, which handle incoming requests, and providers, which are usually your services where most business logic lives. Nest uses dependency injection, meaning your services and classes are reusable and easy to test. Then comes pipes, guards, and interceptors. Pipes help with data validation and transformation. Guards manage access control like route protection. And interceptors can wrap logic around requests like logging or response shaping. Also learn how Nest handles middleware and how it's different from interceptors. And don't skip lifecycle hooks like on module init. They help you control app behavior during startup. Once you get comfortable with the basics, you'll start integrating powerful tools into your Nest apps. For databases, you can connect Nest with Mongoose for MongoDB or Prisma for PostgreSQL. Both are officially supported and work really well with Nest architecture. You also want to set up Swagger docs automatically using decorate on your routes. For data validation, use class validator and class transformer. And make sure to learn the Nest CLI. All right, let's talk about testing. It's very important. A lot of devs skip this part. But let me tell you, if you want to work in real teams or build reliable systems, testing is non-negotiable. There are three layers of testing you need to understand. First, you've got unit tests. These are the smallest. You're testing individual functions or methods. Use Jest, which comes built into Nest.js. Learn how to mock dependencies, so you're testing logic, not external stuff. Second, you've got integration tests, testing how components interact together. For example, hitting your real endpoints and checking if your app responds correctly. Use super test for this inside Nest. Third, there is end-to-end -end testing. Tools like Cypress simulate real user flows. Start small. Even writing a few good tests will level up your code and make you stand out as a developer. Okay, you've built the backend. Now it's time to ship it. DevOps is about everything that happens after you write the code. Running your app locally, deploying it to the cloud, automating tests, and making sure it works for the users. You don't need to become a DevOps engineer, but you do need to know how to deploy and manage your app in production. Start with Docker. It lets you run your app in isolated environments. You learn how to write a docker file, expose ports, and handle volumes. Then move on to docker compose. It lets you spin up your backend and database together with one command. Make sure your docker setup is clean, fast, and doesn't leak secrets or hard-coded configs. Knowing docker alone already puts you ahead of most junior devs. Now let's automate your workflow with CI CD. You can set up a pipeline where every time you push to GitHub, your tests run and your app gets deployed automatically. Use GitHub Actions. It's beginner-friendly and integrates easily. Then for hosting, use Railway or Render when starting out. They're simple and take care of most of the heavy lifting. Later, learn how to deploy manually on AWS EC2 if you want more control. All right, this is where you go from solid backend dev to someone who can scale real applications. Once your app has users, traffic, background jobs, and real-time features, your architecture needs to level up. First, caching. Use Redis to cache database queries or API responses. It massively reduces load and makes things faster. Then you've got rate limiting. It protects your app from abuse. Combine it with headers and status codes to let users know when they're hitting limits. Next, background jobs. When you don't want to make users wait, like sending emails or processing images, push that work to a queue. Use bull MQ with Redis to manage those jobs. Want real-time features? That's where WebSockets come in. Use socket.io or native WS for things like chat, live notifications, or collaborative tools. And finally, don't forget to test your system under load. You don't need to do all of this at once, but knowing these patterns shows you can think beyond just does it work? 
System design is a big topic and honestly one of the most important skills once you're past the basics. Start by understanding the difference between monolith and microservices. Monoliths are simple and great for small teams. Microservices help with scaling but are harder to manage. You'll also hear about API gateways. These sit in front of your services and route traffic handle rate limiting auth and more. Then there is messaging. Systems like RabbitMQ or Kafka let your services talk to each other asynchronously. All right, if you've made it this far, seriously, hats off to you, man. Most people scroll, skim, click away. But if you're still here, it means you're actually trying to level up, not just chasing dopamine hits from random content. You now have the full roadmap. This took me years to figure out. I'll be putting out deep dive videos on all of these topics every single week. So if you want to go from watching roadmaps to actually building real systems, make sure you're subscribed. And by the way, if you want help tailored to your situation, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching where we figure out your next step together. Link is in the description below. See you in the next one. Peace.